No, you wrong. When you go to a conference in astrobiology or in biology in general, sometimes people talk about a delay. And they'll say, the Cambrian explosion happened 540 million years ago. That's when animals, woo, they had radiated. And why did it take so long? Life started 4 billion years ago. Here's today, 500 million years. Is, why did it go from here to here without doing what we think is the most important thing, making us? And so they say, why did it happen so late? And so they talk about it, a delay. Now, this delay has never made sense to me because... In order to talk, there's a train arriving at the station, to say it's early or late, it's delayed, or it's ahead of schedule, you need to know the schedule. If there is no schedule, then you can't talk about a delay. So in order to talk about, oh, this Cambrian explosion should have happened earlier because this is, you need to know what the schedule is. And I don't think there is a schedule. I don't think we have any idea or very, very little idea of what the schedule is. And so that the whole concept of delay or that happened late doesn't make any sense to me. Here's, to, here's someone who's going to straighten me out. Jochen Brock, straighten me out on this. Do you think this word delay makes any... I think it makes no sense. Right. Well, I agree. We don't have a schedule for evolution. We can't look up. Mm, animals should appear here, and uh, sulfur crossed cockatoos should appear uh, you know, 20, 30,000 years ago. But we can, we can look how fast the train might go. We can look at the workings of the train and say, well, a proto-train, so and so many million years ago, should have had, had this certain speed. And does it meet our expectations? Does it come in time or not? A this speed is what you... to arrive at animals? Well, so we had this, this beautiful idea that uh, Bul Bulgaria is going to buy a TGV, a train of great grand vitesse from France. We know this thing can go 300 kilometers per hour. Now you put it on a Bulgarian railway track and you're standing in the capital city and you're waiting for the train to arrive and you, well, you think it should go 300 kilometers per hour but it's not coming it's not coming it's not coming finally it comes and you compute it it only went 30 kilometers per hour and you think wow what delayed this train it didn't go as fast as it should have but maybe now you can come up with hypothesis maybe there was problems with the with the railway track oh, wait wait wait, 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 wait. but to say it didn't go as fast as it should have the whole idea the whole word should have means you already know how fast it goes well so that means if you thought, had, if you had other planets yes, which, oh, this evolved into uh, animals after 3 billion. This over here, animals evolved after 5 billion. If you had a whole series and a distribution, you could talk That's about fine. that. But you do not know. For example, English language. No, Isn't it is, wonderful? Can I, How long did it take to get English language? Can I, oh, about 4 can billion I, years. Was that early or late? Did the can English... I interrupt you here go because ahead, it ahead, becomes nonsense? So that's why I made this analogy. We know that the TGV can go 300 kilometers per hour in France. If it doesn't go 300 kilometers per hour in France in a different... In, in, uh, doesn't go 300 kilometers per hour in a, different la in a different country, then it is not the train. It is something else that holds the train back. And we can do the same with Hold evolution. Back. You, well, listen, Charlie, you can look, for example, in, in a eukaryotic tree of life, what is the pace of evolution, what is the pace of genomic changes, of gene duplications, of the evolution of certain features, of symmetries, of multicellular structures. How fast can these things evolve? And we can measure these things based on the fossil record. We can measure these things based on molecular clocks. Okay, let me give you an example, let me give you can, example of that. And then, we can look, and then we can look in different branches of the tree of life where things, well, based on this calibration, go much slower. And then we can say, well, genomically, genetically, these things could have evolved faster, but they did not. So now we look for environmental, for external factors that were responsible for a different speed. I think that is a fair ask question to ask. And that's the same as asking for what delayed this branch in the tree of life. So I, I, I can agree. Well, I'm not sure I even agree with you on the level of which genes mutate. I mean, here we have a set of genes, you know, A, C, G, T. And so we have a string of genes. And it's going to mutate at a certain rate. Now, we know that certain environments make it mutate more or make it mutate less. Matter of fact, we can say that, uh, and, and sometimes, so who cares whether how much it mutates? What is important is what fraction of those mutations ever make it into the next generation. For example, some parts will mutate a lot and no, nobody cares, and so the genes evolve fast. Some parts, the genes are very well conserved. If it changes a little bit, you're dead. So there are very, very, very conserved genes, and there are other genes that are kind of conserved, and others mutate very quickly. So there's a whole range of things there. Now, if you can tell me, you can predict a priori which one is fast and which one is slow, then that's the problem. I don't think you can. However, you can say, well, wait a minute, there are conserved, slow-moving trains, there are fast-moving trains, 
And then you say, well, let's go a billion years later. Will the same things happen? Well, no. Typically, this conserved one will divide in half. This one will stay conserved, and this one will go all over the place. So there's a whole range of speeds happening all the time. And to say that this multi-speed process, very unpredictable, will then predictably come up with animals after a certain amount oh, of time. Oh, no, I didn't that's say crazy. about talk about animals, Charlie. But, well, that's what but the Cambrian explo- give, that's what the delay, wait, wait, wait. The person <laughs> who said delayed, me, who used this word, was talking about animals. Let me, let, me, let me give you an example where I believe the word delay is absolutely appropriate. For example, on the mainland, in, in Asia, in Africa, in Europe, uh, small creatures with a, with a long nose, proto-elephants became very large elephants. Mammoths, modern southern African ele- elephants, Indian elephants, they became very large. But on islands, for example, on Flores, you have tiny little very cute elephants that look like a normal elephant, but they are, you know, they're almost... You know, a almost dog with a long nose. <laughs> um, and I think it's very fair to ask here, um, why did elephants not become large on this island? And you can come up actually with, with trophic, with nutrient, with energy explanations. Because the small island, ecologically, we can simulate this in computers, didn't allow animal, uh, elephants to become bigger because the population size would be too small and they would go extinct. So there was a physical constraint, which is the size of the island, the amount of food that's available there, that constrained elephants to a certain maximum size. The Florence, the Hobbit, Right, so, what does that well. to, so wait, would, that doesn't mean a delay. That just means we have a different situation and different things happen. Um, it's not I think it's with a fair, delay or a schedule. Well, but this is just this is now just a fight about the use of the word. Wait, wait, no, no, no. It's very important because you're talking about how nutrients and levels control what happens in evolution. But you wait. But Charles, do you have a schedule for the nutrients? Do you have a schedule for the nutrients? No. You do not have a schedule for the nutrients. You ask. You are asking always this question about what do we expect on other planets? One question is do we expect large creatures on other planets? And I think I gave you just an answer about it. Um, there will be no large creatures if something delays the appearance of these creatures. Wait, wait, no, one thing not, is, for you example, didn't say anything about delay. You didn't say anything about delay. You said in one situation you have limitation of ecosystem, in another you don't. Now, that's if you knew what the time dependence of the ecosystem was, then you could talk about a delay. But you do not. You do not have, oh, it's going to have a lot of oxygen here. Now we're going to have a lot of nutrient phosphates. You don't have a schedule for the evolution of these things. And if you don't, then you can't talk about a delay. You cannot talk about a delay. I very much can talk about the delay as long as I define it properly, Charlie. You're just redefining the word. You need here. a schedule. I'm t- you said, oh, you need a schedule for this. Oh, we have a schedule. No, you made a correlation Charlie, between. If you, you made a correlation you between your approach, you animals. Will never, you will never. You will never discover any external, non-genomic, non-intrinsic factor that actually has anything got to do with evolution. If you don't ask that question about delays, you make a prediction based on what we know about genetics, 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 genomics, and the speed of evolution. The thing that we can measure today using molecular clocks, using the fossil record. We can make predictions also for earlier parts of evolution in the Precambrian of what sorts of evolutionary speeds towards certain things we can expect. And if you don't do that, you will never discover any external environmental factor. For example, the nutrient contents of the ocean, sizes of eco space, trophic levels and so on. No, 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 no. You, what you you're saying ask is, the question. No, you can ask the question. You can make correlations and all the correlations you want, and that's a very wonderful thing. What I'm, and you can make causal connections. This caused this. I have no problem with that. I have the problem with saying a priori somewhere else that's very independent with the, whether there's anything associated with a schedule with regard to which things can be delayed or things can be early. But Charlie, you, you forget that scientists can do thought experiments. I can I do create them all the time. very informed, non-nonsense schedule of what I would expect evolution to do if certain, if certain factors are set. And then, if well, I'm disappointed. Well, for example, I assume that the oceans, the last four billion years, the nutrient content, the oxygen content was the same as today. I know what evolution, what genes and genomics can do. And so I put an organism into this ocean, and I expect a certain, a certain evolution of this organism. I have no and then I look in the fossil that. record, I have and no, that, it doesn't I have meet no these problem. expectations. I have no problem with that. You're talking and about the earth. And I come to the conclusion that you're, something is different in these oceans. You're talking about the oceans. earth. The earth, some, things happened, things happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. The same thing in history, one damn thing after another. But to talk about a underlying schedule that can be of the earth that can be applied elsewhere, that's where I'm interested and that's where I'm not seeing in anything that you're saying that such a thing exists. There's only one difference here. 
if we extrapolate the knowledge that we have from Earth to a different planet, then the schedule becomes extremely vague because we don't even know that these creatures had the same biochemistry. Is there anything a schedule? What, what make, what's the most and fundamental I feature? So we, we can put up a schedule, but we put, have to put a huge amount of assumptions into it. The first assumption is that life elsewhere is based on proteins and place. DNA and certain lipids. Uh, it's cellular life in the first instance. All of these things we have to assume. These are very big assumptions, of course. But you can, as an ex scientist, you can make these assumptions, make a thought experiment, and therefore have certain expectations of what happens on a different planet. They're, of course, extremely vague. The schedule of Alpha Centauri will be, you wouldn't want to wait for a train there. But, but wait a minute, but you're right in some sense, but the, the, the disagreement I had with that person at the conference was he was talking in a specific example of the Cambrian explosion being late. Now, and I, okay, so that's nothing to do with other planets, that has to do with Earth. That has to do with his expectations about when the Cambrian explosion should happen. That's correct, with his expectations, now, that's what, correct. What makes somebody like that think that the Cambrian explosion should have happened earlier? I have accused him of saying, oh, I have no expectations. It's just that I'm an animal. These are great. This should have happened earlier just because I think I'm so great. I should have happened earlier. I think I can answer that question. You might come up with this idea of the Cambrian explosion is slight if you look at the eukaryotic tree of life. If you, the tree that you've shown earlier, you show this very bushy tree, it is not a tree that has the same density of branches everywhere along the stem. There seems to be bursts of branches. And in between, there seems to be a lack of branching in the tree. And you might ask, wow, why is suddenly everything branching here and nothing is happening here? That doesn't look like that in something intrinsic within these organisms doesn't allow them to branch. It looks like there could be some external factor a lack of nutrients, for example, that made the tree look less bushy in different wait, 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 parts wait, wait, and stop, regions of stop, the tree. Stop. Let me stop you there. Yeah. Did he ha Is there some type of increase of nutrients or increase of oxygen at the Cambrian explosion that he thinks should have happened a billion years earlier? No. So that is a misunderstanding of the use of the word delay. Um, we use the word delay if we talk about factors that are external to the organism itself, ecological, nutrients, and so on. Just imagine, for example, astronomically, the sun suddenly got 90% of more of useful energy pumped out exactly 550 million years ago. Then you would have such an external factor that would explain suddenly huge energy flow that would allow evolution to do new things because it's simply more energy available to do new things. That would be such an external factor. And then you would talk about delay. Something delayed. Well, well wait a minute. Stop, stop, stop. It, would be an external, was it would be an external factor if life then said, oh, with all this energy, and there would be a correlation between the external energy and this life. Now, imagine that there was this yes. flowering of photons, and then nothing happened. Nothing happened. And then you would say, oh, by the way, it. Uh, Oh, and then whoop, it did, it did uh, radiate. Then you say, oh, it was delayed from my expectation. But your expectation but, was kind of maybe crazy. Yeah. But, of course, you know, there's lots of different hypotheses about the Cayman explosion. Many of them mutually exclusive. Only one, if any, can be right. And the rest is, of course, crazy. All these schedules that people are drawing are wrong. But that's exactly what science is. You draw up hypotheses and then you test them. And this is exactly what lots of scientists do because they're very perplexed about this delay. Many scientists believe what that delay? What delay? The the appearance the appearance of large of, of in principle of an arms race with different organisms that try to eat each other. They, why did the Cambrian explosion happen so early? That is, Isn't that the same question no, of why that, it happened so that late? That is the same question, and it's just as justified. I mean, it's not justified. It's just putting it differently. It's but that question. means it's not justified because we don't have a schedule, therefore you cannot talk about delay or being early. No, it just depends on what schedule you come up with. But he does, what, so what is the schedule that he has come up with to make him say it was delayed? That's the thing I don't example, understand. Uh, the last common ancestor of all eukaryotes, based on molecular clocks, maybe appeared between 1.7 and 1.4 billion years ago. Okay. This creature, and we can actually reconstruct it based on modern genomes, was incredibly complicated. It had many, many more very interesting genes and many 
single celled eukaryotes to die. A very capable creature. Um, but then very quickly write its own name. diverged into some major <laughs> eukaryotic gr okay, groups. All right. And then for nearly a billion years, you do not see anything in genomes. You don't see anything in the fossil record that happens. Should you have seen something? Should well, you have seen something? That is exactly the question. This question that you say, should we? Other people express as there seems to be a delay. Wait a minute, that means because they okay, say, I'm yes, going to assume that genes mutate and get selected for and produce variation, var disperse, disparity right. Right. at a uniform level. That's what you're saying. That's, so some, that's a good assumption. Here is a very complicated organism that is as complicated as the human cell today, nearly. And then we look in the fossil record, human we look cells. at genomic you evolution, human and cells. nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens for a billion years, happens. and suddenly it's mean boom, happens. and we have all animal phyla within 20 million years. You, you could have had lots curious. of happen, lots of happen, I lots of happen, and it all went extinct. That, that picture, a tree that looks like that, a little, little thin, thin stem, and suddenly, boom, when you get this enormous bushy tree, that looks like something you, needs an explanation, You right? get a bushy tree in the fossil record because you have hard parts that come about. Well, but say that, that hard parts, no, now no, were no, hard no, parts no, no. delayed or Charlie, were hard parts Charlie, early? that is a total misunderstanding. While I said that the Cambrian explosion in the first instance, the name comes from an observation of the fossil record that these hard parts appear, the even if you would not see the hard parts, if you would look at the actual creatures that existed before and after the Cambrian explosion, it is still an explosion of different forms and shapes. Completely in animals, independent in whether you can see them in the fossil record in or animals. not. In, in not animals. Not fungi. Well, many other creatures, of not course, plants. followed. Animals completely re-engineered all ecosystems. And, of course, other organisms, you know, gut microbiome could only evolve once okay. there was animals. Now, why did they do this so early? Well. Why did they do this so early? Well, I prefer the question, why did they do it so late? Because I know you do, I, but why do you? What, what's the difference there? What you, I thought you just said, well, you can ask both questions. And I agree, yes, you can ask both questions, well, but neither makes be, that much be, sense be, because we do not have a schedule for whatever happens. Right. One damn thing after another. That's history. That's evolution. It's one damn thing after another. To pretend that you know what the schedule is, is crazy. Okay, you can also the question, ask the question about early, but it doesn't meet the expectations. There's no hypothesis why, what could have held them back even longer. There's no hypothesis held them back type. even longer? Well, Charlie, it's a thought experiment. I know, you but what, to... uh, that's, I'm trying to get into the head. I'm trying to give a little bit of, what is it that makes you ask the question, delay rather okay. than early? Then, then let's make a list of the things, the cocktail that we need to create a multicellular, mortile organism that can creep around and eat other that. things. You can do that. Okay. Um, no, no, course, let's not go into it, but you can do that. And right. so then you need to know, okay, when did those things happen? And then you say, well, it happened here and then that. Right. But you have exactly. no idea about here, why here, it should be here, now rather than later. And, and or now earlier. we look at the different ingredients. And so far, scientists, based on some information, thought that all of these ingredients actually are there. Nothing seems to be missing. And genomically no. the creatures should be able to do certain things but they don't and so therefore we talk about a delay if we had a different scenario for example that one ingredient based on geologists was missing until just five million years ago then you would say wow despite this missing ingredients they came 500 million earlier then we would talk about why did they come why did the train go faster than we thought it would but that's not the case scientists thought all ingredients are there and still for an entire billion years bloody they're not doing anything and that's why we talk about the delay. It's totally now, justified. I think it's a complete bias hogwash. It's, I've heard it many times applied to many things, and they're usually associated with something being human. Said, why did it take us four billion years to get conscious? I mean, we, it should be no, such that, a wonderful course, thing. It totally, should be earlier. That's, of course, why a totally did it take, question. Why did the Cambrian explosion take so late? Why did the eukaryotes take so late? There's the transition huge, between Charlie, prokaryotes Charlie, and eukaryotes an is enormous, so enormous, enormous, and we difference. are eukaryotes. And you know what? Bacteria could you be... You can't <laughs> stop him. If he, if he doesn't like <laughs> a word, he redefines it, and he fights <laughs> the rest of his life no, against it. No, it's just that I've heard the Charlie, word delay so I, many times, and it all talks about coming to us. All talks Charlie, about coming. It's just there's a, a huge bias, difference bias, between animal bias. evolution and the evolution of consciousness because we don't have the slightest idea what um, what the niche all is, what the benefit need, of consciousness is. All you need is, is this, the this, and this. A cranium, you but know, probably four legs. We have a legs. very, very good idea why creatures become multicellular.
Oh, but not why become they conscious. Baloney. So making a schedule, that's, no, that's train not. schedule for consciousness. We don't even know. We can, can, talk, can, about, we can make talk about multicellular train schedule for Mars, Charlie. <laughs> that would be just as good. I completely agree with you. Talking about delay Let's, was consciousness concern. Yeah, we don't know anything. We can't even really? start to construct schedule. So you're happy the with the word delay but, when it comes to Cambrian explosion yes, and you carry out you carry us as well, but not with consciousness. Because here we okay. can construct a schedule that's not even very bad, and therefore we can actually make a schedule that meets oh, or not our expectations. You are so benighted. All right, that's... <laughs>